Yes, I think for foundation trusts, I think there are lots of opportunities. And clearly, the changes that are coming about are some of the biggest that have come about in the NHS in the last 40, 50 years. There's the element of what is known as freedom, and I'm not quite sure that actually is freedom, but it's an opportunity to make more decisions much closer to home and much more relevant to your patients and to the communities you serve. But more importantly than that, I think, it's an opportunity now to involve the patient and involve the public in the decisions that are being made about them. So how do you feel about working with GP consortia and them having the power and the money, if you like? Well, I think that's going to be an interesting relationship, and I think it'll be an interesting relationship for GP consortium to start with, because although the Secretary of State is giving them this opportunity and is giving them this freedom, we know that there are enormous numbers of GPs who are hesitant about it. They see themselves first as GPs and secondary as members of the business community. But I think when you analyse what the Secretary of State is actually doing, he's actually giving to the people who have first interaction with the patient. And he's saying to the GP, this is your patient, you help the patient make the decision about what is best for them. And that has to be right. That has to be right that it's the GP that's making the decision and not someone else. But how satisfied are you that the GPs are going to have the backup, the transition, that everything's going to flow in a way that makes them able to do this job? Well, clearly that's the issue and that's the issue that uh, has been taxing a lot of us. I was heartened to hear uh, the Secretary of State saying that he wants the key people who are currently in primary care trusts to work with the consortium and to move to the consortium to provide that support and provide that assistance. There are an enormous number of very good people in primary care trusts who understand commissioning, understand relationships with providers, understand relationships with acute hospitals and their input into the GP consortium is going to be invaluable. And how do you view the prospect of competition for services? Well, that has to be healthy. That has to be healthy. What you, but what you have to recognise is that at the end of the day, it will be the GP and the patient who will be making the decision or giving, I beg your pardon, I'll rephrase that, it will be the GP and the patient who will have the choice now, in my part of the world, it has to be said, over the years, and we do patient surveys every year, the vast majority of people are quite happy to use their local facility that they have known and cherished and loved. But the introduction of other providers, particularly from the, particularly from the private sector, will, I think, put a different dimension on that. Because I suspect that people will actually be looking and saying, can I now get this done differently? Can I get it done quicker? And that means for those, uh, those organisations that have been in the business a long time, they really have got to look to their act to ensure that they are meeting those requests and those demands. And of course, if they don't meet those requests and those demands, they're not up to standard, they can now be closed well, down. Well, indeed they can. Uh, I think, I have to say, I think it unlikely we shall reach the stage where they will be closed, although in some instances that may be the appropriate action. I think it more likely they're going to be taken over and run in a different way, and that certainly would be appropriate.